Once again, welcome to ITSC 1345. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 7. Uh, this will be packages, a content area, a package, a container. The, the package uh, has two components to it, a header component and a body component to it. So you have a header and a body. Uh, the syntax uh, to create is, is the same as we've been looking at. So you have create or replace, and then you have package, and then package name. Now, there's also the idea where you have the header and you have the body. And you have to have a create or replace for the header and a create or replace for the body. Now, what happens here is the package in the header portion basically is a list of the SOAP programs that will be used in the body. So, remember we had, we were talking about the benefits. So, in here you would say, I'm going to use a program for FICA. I'm going to use one for retirement. I'm going to use one for... Uh, uh, insurance. Okay, and each of these is going to have a function with it. So you're going to have like FICA, retirement insurance, uh, and you're going to have the, the, the function on each one. Now, we're going to bring in this value because we started with that 40 hours and $10. So you're going to bring in $400. And you're going to populate this $400 through this whole process. And then in here, so this, these are the programs you're going to use. And then down here is where you actually list the programs and you actually do the work, you actually list the work that's going to happen. And over here you have to create or replace the body. And you have body name. Now once again, uh, understand the naming conventions that are going to be used. And you also have the is, don't forget the is, as scenario that, that, that is part of the syntax process. And then here you have, uh, how am I going to do this? Okay, for, for this process, we'll just take the FICA. So you're going to call the, the procedure function, I'm mean the procedure uh, FICA, and in that you're going to have a function. And in there, you're going to bring in the $400, you're going to do the calculations, and you get the extraction. And you're going to do that on all of them. So you'll have the procedure for the FICA. So you list it up here, and down here it does the work. Uh, in all this process, don't forget your friend, D D M S output, put line. Remember that. This is your friend that you have to embed in all this process to help you keep track of any issues that you may have. Now, understanding that uh, you have we, have, we have brought the $400 in. Now, the $400 is going to be shared in this whole process, so it, beco it becomes a global event. So this would be like a global variable that will be shared amongst all the items. So in this process, you have to develop the scope that will be working with the uh, item that you're going to be bringing in. So here, you'll bring the $400, and that's going to be shared throughout the item. That's going to be global. So you have global and specific variable to be used within this item. Now, within the FICA, you'll have specific items. Within the retirement, you'll have specific items. So this is where you have uh, specific events and global events that will be shared. Uh, now, in this process, uh, you also have to consider whether some of these uh, packages are recursive in nature or somewhat singular in events. Uh, for example, you, know, you have maybe bo annual bonuses once a year. 
So you may have a package that is not recursive where like these items happen every pay period because you have to have all these, all these calculations done every pay period. But the, the annual bonus is done once a year. So there are the idea of recursive events with the packages or singular events with a package. Another good idea for a singular event is, you know, every year when you roll over from one calendar business year to another calendar business year, you may have to restructure everything to start collecting the information under the new calendar business year, either the IRS year or the business year. So you would have a package that would construct that event, but that's a singular event. It happens once a year. Uh, and also in this process, as we're doing, you have to consider whether all these events will be able to write to a database or read to a database in that annual event where you have to create this structure for the new business year, yes, you would have to write to the database because you have to create that structure to warehouse the new information that you're going to be using. Now, in this scenario, uh, one of the things that you can do is give so for the purposes of this example, we're going to have this calculator, this function, and we're going to call it A. And A is going to take some value and multiply it by another value. So it's going to be just A times B. Now, instead of having to have multiple events where you have the same, you have the same program with different names, there is a process called overload. The overload allows you to have, allows you to use the same name multiple times. Now, there is this caveat that you have to kind of be careful that it has to be sequential in nature. That, so in this scenario, the FICA would use that. Once the FICA gets through with it, then it, it would be used by the retirement. Once the retirement gets through with it, it would be used by the insurer. So you have to develop some sequencing here. And that's designed so you don't have to write more programs or subprograms than you need. You can write one program and use it multiple times. So it's an efficiency issue. Uh, we talked about the, the, the purity levels that you have to uh, make sure that uh, in that scenario where it's a single event, you write to the database. Now, in this event where you're going to write to the database, sometimes you have to give the authority to this process to be able to take that action. So one of the things you have to work with is you have to grant privileges to this process in this annual event to go in there and create this structure that's going to warehouse the information for the new year. In that event where you have the singular event and you do every year, and there have been a lot of changes. So one year you have insurance company A, the second year you have insurance company B. Because some of the events have changed, sometimes you have to drop the package. And that works just like when you drop a table. But remember that a package has two components to it. It has the header and the body. So when you decide that you no longer need this package and you're going to drop it, understand that it's a two-level event because you have to drop the header and you have to drop the body in order for this thing to be efficient. So we go back to the beginning where you have to create or replace with a package name. Make sure that the naming convention fits what you need. Do not forget your, your is, as. Understand that you are itemizing the programs that are going to be used here. And then you have the actual activity that's going to happen in the body. Oh, uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, the scope. Let's talk about the scope. So $400 that's global or specific to the area. You have the overload process where you can use uh, the same item multiple times so you don't have to uh, do multiple programming. We talked about the fact that you have to uh, give uh, authorization to this process if it's going to be significant uh, structural change to the database. You have to make sure that whatever process has the authority to do what it's going to do. And then finally, we talk about once you get through with this something and you're through with it, you have to be sure that you drop the header and you drop the body to make sure that that package is no longer available for use.
And that concludes the process on packaging. Thank you.